welcome to the Data Democracy. Presented by renowned O'Reilly author Ole Olsen Banyu. And powered by Xenia. Make your data accessible and discoverable by anyone, anywhere, at any time. Hi, Irina. Hi, nice to meet you, Ole. Nice to meet you too, Irina. I'm very excited to have you on. Uh, and hi, everyone. Uh, you're listening to the Data Democracy podcast, and I'm your host, Ole Olesen Banjo, Chief Evangelist in Sinea and the author of the Enterprise Data Catalog, published by O'Reilly. I want to explore what a data democracy is, and that's what we talk about on the show with all the guests. Today's guest is Dr. Irina Steinbeck. Irina is the Managing Director of Data Crossroads where Irina helps define the scope of data management for each and every company out there. Furthermore, Irina has published four books on data management, of which I have read Data Lineage from a Business Perspective, a book that I highly recommend. Data Lineage has puzzled me for quite some years, also writing my own book, but Irina's take on Data Lineage is impressively clear and pragmatic, as you will hear in a bit. Irina, I think you stand out as a true technologist in your approach to data management by not just teaching and coaching tech, that's the easy part, but always focusing on the use cases for tech, for the business. And so to open the conversation, Irina, can you share a bit more on your professional experience and what you do? Yeah, sure. Uh, honestly, I have a complicated background. Uh, my first education was civil engineering, and I got my PhD in the area of reinforced concrete construction. Later, I got MBA in financial management, and um, I worked for several years in management consultancy for the World Bank, focusing on business planning and company restructuring. And later, I managed projects for enterprise reinforced planning uh, implementation, so I successfully completed 12 uh, large international projects. And I have uh, some experience in business and financial control. And all of this expertise and experience finally brought me to data management. I started my career in data management from scratch, really from scratch. I joined a medium-sized bank and got the task of automating uh, management account reporting. And after developing and implementing a data mark, uh, we moved to a data uh, warehouse project. At this time, one of the consultants came and told me the following. I think we need data management, but I don't, I don't know what it is. Can you check it? <laughs> and honestly, I started Googling the term data management. Uh, it took six years for me to implement the data management function in the company uh, from scratch. Nobody understood what I was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I know the feeling. I know the feeling, Arena. I learned everything uh, really Googling. And funny enough, uh, but I didn't know about the existence of Demo Dembok. So this is the data management Bible <laughs> at the time. And I only found out the Demo Wheel model and use it as a foundation for all of my activities. So uh, this experience I shared in three of my books, Data Management Cookbook and Data Management Toolkit, and later on the Orange Data Management Framework. And this is how I became practitioner without any knowledge in advance. And I built this knowledge simply based on practice. Later, I discovered uh, the demo had two editions and I investigated and even modeled these two editions. So I know demo from my heart by now. Hmm. But at the same time, I also discovered some um, you know, weak po points of this uh, edition. So that's why I started developing my own methodology. So this is uh, the way how I become practitioner in data management. But in 2016, I started my uh, new journey in data lineage, also from scratch. And these two journeys in implementing data management function and data lineage brought me to a very interesting conclusion and it took me three years uh, to formulate one uh, my idea in one sentence and the sentence sounds like this that implementation of a data management framework follows the logic 
of data lineage documentation and vice versa. Yes. So, Yes. Everything please, was... please elaborate. Please elaborate on that. Can you elaborate a little on yeah, that? Yeah, sure, sure. I can elaborate on it. Um, so let let me come back a little bit uh, to challenges which I've seen in the current framework. So finally, why I did start uh, my uh, developing my own methodology. I really very much appreciate and uh, respect them. Yeah, for what they are doing, because they really provide a foundation. And if I ha have to develop some knowledge, I go there. But what I haven't seen in them and in all for other uh, frameworks, and this is the integrated approach to implementing multiple data management capabilities. So mm -hmm. they focus on data quality, they focus on metadata management, and they even literally stated in DEMA uh, Tembok Edition 2 that this version of DEMA doesn't provide the integrated approach for implementing all capabilities. But mm -hmm. this is what not practitioners are waiting for. They really need to know how to do stuff. Yeah, I know from my experience, nobody is interested to listen what they should do. They want to know <laughs> how to do it. At least all of my data lineage stakeholders uh, yeah. said me this is way in this way. As I said, I had a very big fortune that I had to implement data ma management on my own, and I had to investigate how data quality relates to metadata management, how data governance, and how different artifacts are linked with each other. Yeah, so I don't believe if somebody says, oh, we, we are going to start with data quality initiative, because it doesn't make any sense. You need to have mm. other capabilities like data governance, like metadata management, like data modeling, in order to deliver some results of data quality. So when I implemented data management framework, I learned how these relationships. I knew how you should link them. And then I came to data lineage, yeah? And our data lineage was an interesting journey. At, that, uh, at this time, nobody really knew what it meant. And what I did, maybe because of my academic background a little bit, I started again investigating uh, DEMA and other guidelines. So what I found in DEMA, first of all, that they explored five or six different uh, concepts that had a lot in common with data lineage. Yeah, so finally, they mixed it up and I use it as a basic. I say, okay, this is simply data lineage. And you can document data lineage at various abstraction level. At the same time, I also analyzed various legislative requirements because for many companies, especially for financial institutions, legislative requirements is the key reason to start a data lineage initiative. And strangely enough, no legislative document says literally we need data lineage. So they mean something. They mean some artifacts like, for example, report catalog or metadata repository or something like that. But then you should translate these requirements in some meta uh, model of data lineage. And when I did realize that data lineage, first of all, should and can and maybe must be documented at multiple abstraction levels, it means that you must link different components and objects along different levels, but you also should link them vertically. And when I analyzed all of these components, I've seen a lot of dependencies with implementation of data management framework. Because everything starts, if you start documenting data lineage from top level, you do always the same. You should find out your business processes, you need to find out uh, your IT assets, you should link them, and it's already the first level of data lineage documentation. But you do the same when you start implementing a formal data management function. So finally, it was very interesting doing totally different stuff. I came to the same, uh, same technology, to the same logic, to the same artifact, and <laughs> yeah, it, it took only years for me to realize it, but uh, this is uh, one of my key conclusions and the basic of all of my methodology. Yeah, thank you, uh, Irina, for this uh, elaborate answer. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a long question here. I read your book. Uh, oh, sorry, that was 
one. Here we go. This one. I just read it. What I really liked with your book is that I wrote my own book, the Enterprise Data Catalog, that was published with O'Reilly. And I was looking for sources that described data lineage. And I found a lot of sources doing that. One uh, source, for example, claimed that there are at least 17 different definitions of data lineage. Uh, I found a lot of sales material describing data lineage in, in all kinds of ways. And that gave me the conclusion that, okay, there is no formal definition of data lineage. Let's just uh, conclude that in a footnote of my book. And I dare say I was right. But at the same time, had I read your book uh, at that point in time, I don't know when it was published, actually. Um, 2021, I think. What you do so 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 efficiently in your book on data lineage is that you say, okay, first of all, there's a, a, an array of concepts that actually means data lineage, data flow, data integration, all these different concepts mm -hmm. that that either relate directly or indirectly to data lineage. And furthermore, there, these definitions also express various ways to think of data lineage. And instead of what I really like about your book is that instead of just uh, discarding all these conclusions, you, you put them into your own meta model and you structure these definitions in a way that really makes uh, at least attentive readers like myself aware of the fact that data lineage is a, is a multitude of perceptions. You can see data lineage in many different ways depending on what your business needs, what you want to use data lineage for in your business. And that really, like, that hit me like a, like a cannonball. I, I really like that uh, definition. It's very analytical, preci uh, precise, I think, Irina, and very surprised. Every th single definition that I have seen on data lineage is technical. Some description of, or most of them, right? They, it describes, okay, when you integrate data from this source to that source, then you can scrape these things and you can measure how it travels. But, but, uh, but anyway, it's just, it's so nice to see that technical details, they are secondary. You need to, to understand. And I think we'll touch a little bit, bit more on the data democracy part later in the conversation. But in terms of a data democracy, what we really need to do is to lift ourselves up over the technical details, over the technical stuff. Every engineer can, like, can, can, can muscle some non-technical person with a technical explanation. Everyone with a technical background can do that. But, but you shouldn't do that for technology, right? So what I like here is that you, you lift it up a, a notch, say that, okay, there are a lot of different technologies and a lot of different ways to actually execute data lineage technically, but that's not the point, friends. We want to see how data moves around at various different levels for different purposes, right? I think uh, this is simply my way of working, you know, it's usually what I, I think I've been doing the same all of my life. I pick up some new area and I started, first of all, going into details and then I go up to see the whole picture. Because, you mm. know, data lineage, I started analyzing in 2000, or uh, I started writing the book in 2019. But before that, I already made some investigations that really little bit surprised me. I wouldn't say it shocked, but surprised me when I compare it to leading data management guidelines, uh, DEMA and the COM, data management capability model by the Enterprise uh, Data Governance Council. They speak about data management, but they have totally different meanings about data management. They have totally different context and structure of data management. And it was starting point. Finally, even in the uh, 2019, I gave a very short presentation in the enterprise data world about the differences in our terminology. It was first uh, surprise for me. Later, I analyzed different data management maturity models where I also seen the differences. And if you take a look at, at a lot of my articles, it goes about the same. We have 
don't have, unfortunately, in the data management commu community, a line terminology. And I stopped really hoping that we will ever have this aligned terminology. But at least, you know, I try to get attention of people. If you start speaking about data governance, please explain what you mean by that. <laughs> the same, you know, <laughs> there are a lot of, and the same happens with data lineage. I didn't know anything about it. So I simply start diving and understanding. But, you know, uh, you, I referred in my book only uh, five uh, concepts, which I, uh, in a lot of in common yards, data chain is integration data architecture, it's um, data value chain, there are a lot of, but later, uh, even last year, I discovered that meta model of knowledge graphs or, or enterprise knowledge graphs are similar to data lineage. So finally, these are synonymous in some context. Yeah, so uh, later, I also, you know, when I finalized my book, I did realize that everything what I wrote about data lineage is also applicable for metadata management, because data lineage is a very complex, in in at least in the context we understand, it's very complex metadata construct, and without having metadata management in place, you can hardly do something with data lineage. But can you imagine last or uh, last? So a couple of weeks ago, I finalized my online course on O'Reilly on data lineage, and there were yeah, and there were some challenges when I asked people they what they document data lineage, and they say we don't have data metadata management function, which for me it's not true because if they deal with data lineage, they already have something with metadata management. So these are challenges, and when I started diving into the concept, because for me it's very important to understand what I'm talking about. But it's very, um, I see it as a methodology that is both technically very capable, but also uh, something that is, I, I won't say rooted in humanities as such, but, but you study text, instead of study technology in your book, only technology, you study technology and texts. You interpret interpretations of technology, interpretations that are that are written in text. And I I really like that. It's a it's something that gives another perspective than than most textbooks that, that simply just tries to explain the technology itself. All my book is on also practice space. Yeah? Because when mm. I started investigating the data lineage. And I first did some sort of theoretical investigation, but later I have been working for years as a product owner for data lineage implementation. So all of my experience I get I got from there. I'm not a technical person, but I also uh, always work, you know, like, I would say it's like business analysts or bridge between technical people and business people. So trying to understand what business people need and how technology can add to it. And later, yeah, just, you know, when I finalized this journey of data lineage implementation, I know, in fact, uh, requirements, really technical requirements, people must pay attention to. And since then, I, since then, I'm very interested in learning technologies because data lineage technologies evolve enormously for the last five, seven years. I've seen it, you know. Five years ago, there were maybe four or five providers of data lineage solution. Just now, I found 44 providers that claim ha having data lineage capabilities in their solutions. Uh, so, yeah, it's, um, you always oh. should, should mix all together. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I must say 44 solutions, that sounds like, um, like depending on depending on of course on your definition on data lineage mm -hmm. um, that could be a lot or not so many um dedicated data lineage solutions i know that there are two uh, providers at least that that work uh, with data lineage as their main offering and then there are an array of data catalogs providing data lineage as yeah. a yeah, yeah. as a yeah. feature inside them and and uh, i guess that uh, that more technologies outside of the data catalog space also provide some kind of lineage, at least if you have this this broader view on uh, on lineage, right? 
Yeah, yeah, you know, finally, there a question regarding the technology for data lineage is uh, very complicated because everything again starts with metadata model. Yeah, because when we speak just now about data lineage, we still continue thinking about technical data lineage at the physical level and the tone. Uh, but it's again depending on what company is looking for, yeah, at which levels. And I've seen the trend that lately, especially financial institutions, they need and they want to document data lineage at multiple levels. Yeah? Mm. And coming back uh, to your question regarding providers, yes, from this 44 uh, vendors, only 25 I would recognize as really data lineage providers. Yeah, really focused mm. on data lineage with adding some additional capabilities. Because others, 75%, uh, do differently. They provide other capabilities and use data lineage as sort of enabler. Uh, but then again, you have uh, a lot of questions regarding what really they can do, because uh, I have some, some viewpoints on what data lineage tool must do. And if it's not there, it would be really useless to have data lineage. We should hear those uh, criteria, Arena. I think the listeners would be very interested in that. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, uh, it's again, if you start speaking about only technical data lineage, there are several um, points professionals must, must take uh, really pay attention to. First of all, technical data lineage must be documented at attribute level, at column level. Yeah? It's not or a lot of uh, providers do it at, at table level. Yeah. And it's, not, it's, it's useless, even for business users, it's useless. Yeah. This is one point. The second point, which is also very important, is the documentation of business rules. Hmm. Yeah, and there are some like archiving capabilities and some, some requirements for visualization. But I would say archiving, it's one of the most important ones. It's yes, also yes, very, I... very difficult to maintain. Yes, I, I try to emphasize the same thing in my book about... Uh... Uh, life cycle management of data. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Version control, yeah. yeah. Version everything. Yeah. yeah, but also the archiving part, right? I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's when, pe when I say, when, when someone says archiving, most people just, uh, they just shut off. They don't, they don't want to listen because uh, many business leaders think it's boring, quite honestly. But no, it's very, you know, very you important. Know. You know, with data lineage, it's uh, not such a boring <laughs> by one reason. Financial department requires to have a version seven years back. Yeah, in some countries, it's, mm. uh, I think even in Sweden, it's 10 years back. And when you talk to finance people, they say we need to have all data lineage seven years back with all versions in it. Mm. Unfortunately, it's also not physically pos possible. Yes. That's why, you know, uh, I can say, yeah, you must pay attention to archiving, to versioning control, but then to find out some sort of pragmatic solution, how you really can uh, realize. Yeah, that was another take uh, in your book that I really liked mm -hmm. uh, in, in comparison to um, people have approached me saying, what should we do with data lineage? What is the best data lineage solution out there? And all the technologies I have looked at, I haven't looked at it as dense, as, 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 as deep as you, that's for sure, Irina, because I was focused on, on data cataloging in general. But I have said to a lot of people, well, there is no perfect data lineage solution that can do everything data lineage. You need to find out what you want and compare it to the technology that you are assessing. And people have been quite happy about that kind of advice but I have gone a little more into depth about it than, than just this advice here. But, but having your book as a framework really helps people decide, okay, first of all, they get to a methodology to formulate what it is they want to do with data lineage. And then afterwards, once they have done that, they can translate it uh, very, very neatly into technical requirements, and then they can assess together. So, yeah. so that is a really uh, that is a really useful element of your book, and you definitely like you you uh, it's it's clear you stand out as as someone with with the with the right amount of pra pra practical experience to 
to actually talk about this. I want to move on a little bit in in, in the conversation. Uh, I mean, we are focusing, uh, as I see it, a lot on data democracy, but very indirect. I mean, to, to, to share some context here, because data democracy is a rather new concept, but but data democratization as a process, as the description of as, of a process has been circulating in quite some years. And, and data democratization is... This, is this fact, this reality that modern cloud-based solution primarily, they are making data accessible, discoverable, uh, more easy to use uh, altogether. Uh, this, this movement has been called the data democratization because more and more people in, in companies are capable of doing more and more stuff with, uh, with data. Uh, because of new technology. So how does data lineage play into the data democratization process? Let's agree, yeah. Data democratization means that business people can use outcomes of data for purpose of their business needs. This is what I understand of data lineage. Data lineage. Who needs data lineage? Ten years ago, it was only technical people that heard this, and just now, even in financial institutions, all business people need data lineage. Yeah, they think they need data lineage. I started the project by gathering requirements from business people. It took me three or four months to sit with people and discuss, explain what data lineage is and what they expect from that. The first lesson learned, I gathered a very big uh, meeting with a lot of people. I developed a presentation for two hours. You know, we didn't go further than the page number one with general requirements for data lineage by one reason. Business people, because they don't know this concept, they can hardly uh, express their needs. Yeah? Mm. So they told me, you know, we think you know better what we need. So when it's done, please come to us and uh, show what you've done. This is maybe one of the biggest, it's not mistake because uh, I ask people about it, but this is mistake that many companies can, uh, can make if they don't ask business people what they need, especially mm -hmm. regarding data lineage. Because what happened in reality? We did implement metadata lineage. And then after that, I started a lot of sessions explaining, showing. And I started talk to people, you know, this is metadata lineage, yeah? You can see the process. And the first question was, can we see data, data change? We don't need to see tables. We don't understand that we need, really need to see data change. And you know, at the same time, finally it was really in the beginning of our uh, journey that I discovered and I gi even gave the name, data value lineage to describe the requirements of business people. They are not interested in metadata lineage. They're really interested only what happened with data itself. I got one million in my report that I, I need to know on all underlying contracts and I need to know what happened and I need to know all transformations and it will be better if I have it in Excel. It, it's <laughs> really what people... So there were a lot of, you know, even funny, funny situations. I that no, we don't have any solutions on the market that can support data value lineage. We can find some sort of workaround solution for that. And I continued the presentation using again data lineage and somebody asked me, but you say data lineage, maybe it's still chance that we can document it. And you know, this is one of the key important points before coming to business people and say, hi guys, we have something for you. We need to come and ask, what do you need? Because yeah. the same example, I, I had a very big, uh, a very large international company and they had um, complicated landscape, but everything has been built in a scale. So for them, for their data engineers, it's very easy to use graph database with some visualization techniques. They need the data lineage, they build, build it themselves. And the uh, project manager expected that finance would wow they made the presentation they really expected you know 
and it was silence from finance people because they didn't understand what they seen. They didn't know what they should do with that. So for me, data lineage, it serves the needs of business people for sure. But when it comes uh, to exploring the results, then the challenge starts. And if you simply will come to business people and say, hi guys, this is data lineage, please use it. They will not do it because it's difficult. It's really even complex for data management professionals. Mm-hmm. And then you face the situation and I'll share um, my personal example. We spent one year on implementing technical data lineage. And after that, we spent two years on building analytics and analytics for me meant very simple stuff. In report, we have one attribute. We need to know how many attributes we need from sourcing system. And then we needed to look for business transformations around. And when I was able to show this in Excel sheet for data management professionals, it was starting point to speak about something. So it's again the question, you know, it's, Enabling data democratization is not tooling. It really starts from asking what they need and why they need it. Nor them. My advice when people start think, speaking about data lineage is, you know, I say, great. Documenting data lineage is time and resource-consuming exercise. Can you explain me why you need it? And when you know why you need it, you can understand what kind of data lineage you need. And after that, you can start implementing. Because, you know, documenting data lineage, it's not a project. It's also not a program. At some point, it must start as, uh, you know, ongoing process. Yeah, daily operation. Because it's, it's daily operations because, you know, it's even documenting data lineage in one application may take a year. Oh, yes. Yeah? Yeah. Well, but I'm, you don't. I'm, you are not interested in data lineage in one application. You should see it uh, across all pipelines, and especially, you know, when we speak about multi-cloud environments, how you can see this data lineage across the multi-cloud <laughs> environments. You know, so it it becomes such a big uh, task that you, at some point, people start thinking, "Oh, we don't need it." I I have two. Well, I at least have one question, but two kind of comments here. I think I think you touched upon some, it may be the most relevant uh, takeaway so far we've had. What you just said about data democracy is that we shouldn't, I mean, it's the tooling that has, that has ignited the concept of data democratization, but, but the data democracy itself is something that we shouldn't consider the tools uh, the enablers of we should build a data democracy by asking what we want to do with data, why we need uh, certain processes in our organization, and then we should look at the tooling. Yeah. I think that's a very, very important takeaway, Irina. I, uh, I, I will, I will remember that one. And, 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 and then another question, and that, this is really a question, right? Um, Lineage in a multi-cloud environment. Uh, have you have you have you have you seen a solution that can no. do that? Because I <laughs> certainly haven't. Uh, no, no, no. You know, I've never seen the solution for data lineage that covered the whole enterprise. What I've seen some attempts to do it for some pieces of enterprise. And when I said we did implement data lineage, the only what I meant we did implement data lineage in newly created environment or uh, maybe 10 or 12 applications from two vendors. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. this has already cost us in general more than three years to deliver some valuable results. Yeah. And, you know, I can speak hours for a lot of challenges because people, even if you speak about technical data lineage, Mm -hmm. you don't need to think that you can do everything automatically. It, It will never happen. In any way, you need to have some sort of manual interventions. You never can find all metadata you need, especially regarding the business rules. 
And then you face a lot of challenges with uh, proving and checking uh, the metadata quality, because you always uh, can expect something there. So it's again the question, what do you mean by data lineage, for what purpose you need it, and um, especially if you need to document it at multiple levels and link them vertically, it's, uh, it's always manual or exercise, unfortunately, especially at the top levels, it's only manual exercise. It is, it is, and it and it always will be. And that's another uh, nice uh, element that I like in your book is that you just combine the, the technical automated solution with the manual mappings of, uh, of of data lineage, which which is how it will always play, because mm. you can you can I think you can express it mathematically. I can't do it right, uh, like quick quickly enough, but there, you must be able to formulate it mathematically that the number of applications, the number of technologies, the number of program languages, they evolve faster than any technology would be able to provide a data lineage solutions between all those technologies. So it's technically, physically impossible to do a data lineage solution that would always at every time for every technology be the perfect data linear solution, right? No, it, it's hardly possible because, you know, what I've seen, uh, for example, you need to create some sort of metadata lake, yeah? To mm -hmm, gather metadata. Mm -hmm. But it's again, metadata lake, it's a, cent a centralized uh, architecture, yeah? Maybe for large companies, it's also n not the solution. It's maybe they need some sort of distributed. And then you again face how you can link all, all of this. And yeah, I think that data lineage has its limits somewhere, you know, as also as metadata management, because it's yes. a the question what metadata management is. And I think people somehow limit metadata management only to technical data lineage, which it requires in business data lineage. And just now, if you start talking about the data observability, this is addition, they add a lot of uh, operational metadata to technical and business one. And then you face the situation regarding the volumes. So I think that uh, volumes required for metadata is much higher than for data, data volume. Yes, data. yes, agreed, agreed. I, Irina, I have two more questions Please? if you feel like it. First of all, um, uh, I really like that when you mention your, the projects that you've been in, it took you six years to establish a data management function. You spent three years assessing a data lineage solution for a company. How are you able to both personally stay motivated and um, capable of delivering? And how do you manage to keep these projects going for so long because usually and you know this just as well as i usually with with tech projects it projects a lot of people are excited in the beginning because new tech is always fun people say oh we can do this and we can do that and then the shit hits the fan if i don't know if i may say that on the podcast but you know what i mean right yeah, the, yeah, sure, the, yeah. the realization of the technical debt the complexity the interconnectedness of everything what can we actually do how can we deliver anything at all how do you stay motivated how do you deliver in such an environment you know what i liked about data management when i started my career every day you come to your job you don't know what what to expect, yeah? Because every day something, you know, you have expected problems and you have unexpected problems. Or right? finally it happened every day that something, something come up. So this, uh, this challenge, yeah, the permanent challenge in your life is some sort of great motivator for everything what I've been doing. Because I can share with you a very simple example. I... Uh, for example, I spent years yeah, on thinking and implementing my methodology for establishing data management framework. But lately, I did realize that the type of data architecture is maybe one of the key drivers of key uh, impact factor. On that. So for me, it was, oh, it's, it's some new insight. I need to elaborate on it. I, I have to take a look at it. Because, for example, I provided consultancy for two companies to implement data governance in data mesh 
environment. And what I've seen that this company has implemented data mesh in totally different uh, approaches. Wait. Yeah, yeah. And, and in two different ways. So for me, it's you know unexpected challenges is the key motivator why I continue doing something for a long period of time. But that is, uh, I just think that it's quite impressive that you're capable of. Uh, I mean, I've seen many projects die one two years in because of complexity, because of politics in organizations and so forth. So just the fact that you're capable of, of getting through that, I think is, that must feel very rewarding. Um, and, and so that takes me to the other question that you actually mentioned here in, in your answer. When I look at your meta models, for example, the one on page 38 in chapter two, that was where it struck me. Do you think, uh, or to what extent do you think uh, the concept of data mesh would alter uh, your data lineage uh, models? I mean, you have this movement that is rather classical and completely like how many companies work, with source systems, and then you have data warehouses, data marts, and then you have reporting, so to say, on top. Would you consider doing a different kind of model for data mesh? Yeah, it's you know I spent uh, lately a lot of time on analyzing uh, what data products are uh, and approaches for data mesh, and you know what I did realize that many companies little bit mix the data domain architecture with data mesh. <laughs> There's a lot of confusion in uh, that field, right? Because, <laughs> And this is what I've seen even in definitions of data mesh of data products. If you take a, a look at enterprise architecture, yeah, forget about the business, but take data application and technology. The classical data mesh covers all of this, uh, all of this archi architecture, they put it together and platform and uh, lo logic and applications and then data itself. But a lot of people narrow data mesh or to the data domain architecture, where they speak only about data sets at logical or physical level. And then you face the challenge. If you have one platform yeah, that supports the same technology, then you may be able to document data lineage across the whole enterprise. Because it's again the point, you don't need to know the data lineage in one data mesh. You may know, it's nice to know, but it's not really what um, the data lineage concept means in that case. But if people use different platforms for data domains to realize data domains, then you face a challenge and then you may come to some sort of idea of centralized architecture with metadata lake where you have to put all metadata there and then starting doing. But I think uh, what I've seen in reality, it's very, uh, really very hard uh, going projects. It's it requires a lot of time, it requires a lot of effort, and um, it, it, it maybe requires too much resources to really uh, deliver data lineage as it's expected. Yeah, it, it complicates stuff even more. <laughs> yeah, it's it kind complicated. Of you know, I think there are more complex architecture, the more complex the solution. Especially, mm -hmm. you know, there is another question what, uh, what challenge with the data mesh because the classical data mesh speaks only about analytical data. Yes, but exactly. But when, when you face the reality, people still know, no, we need also take the operational data in, and even the main uh, the main driven design, it was based mm -hmm. also for operational data. And yes, I, I had the chance even uh, in uh, last uh, May to speak with Alex of uh, Jean-Marc de Cany in London. And okay. I, I approached them with this challenge as they say, yes, yes, we understand it also now that uh, a lot of companies really would like to extend it. And so I think there are a lot of, finally every, every company uh, nowadays must, must find own way to, do, to define what they understand as data measure and how they're going to yeah. implement it. Hey, uh, Irina, uh, this was uh, 
it was very very fun to have you on i you have a new new fan i'm a big fan of your books um definitely read the other books now that i've read the data lineage book and uh I'm very happy that you took the time to uh, come here on the Data Democracy Podcast. Yes. Thank you very much, Irina. Okay, so these are my takeaways from my conversation with uh, Irina Steinbeck. So first of all, some data leader takeaways. The first one, don't let uh, technology define how you use data lineage. As a data leader, you should define uh, data lineage from a business perspective always. Uh, second, be very clear about the level of depth you want to use data lineage for. It can go from very, very high level to very detailed levels. And third, remind yourself, there is no perfect data solution out there. That technology does not exist. So you should assess those that best match your business requirements. And that is why you need to define those business requirements up front. Furthermore, some data democracy takeaways. We should not let uh, technology define what we want to do. Data lineage is a capability, not a technology. Technology supports this capability. And it's very important that we define the capability itself. Understand that. Second, data lineage is a request from the business. Uh, so it is not a service supposed to d be delivered by IT without taking into account the business. That is not a data democratic practice. You should include the business when you're enabling a data uh, lineage technology to really understand what it is as a capability. And third, data lineage helps you get on top of a data democratic way of using data that is also governed. And that is why you need a data lineage a technology and capability. But remember to define it from a business perspective. That's it. Bye bye.